guys, and welcome to another episode of the Kevlar Family Podcast, where it's all things educational for you guys, whether if it's between movies, TV shows, cartoons, or, you know, the, the music as well, because all of us grew up on music. So this month, we will be discussing 2002, which is the year. Uh, as you can see, I am by myself. Unfortunately, Kevin had some uh, challenges as far as power outages go. Um, and then Ro, of course, is getting his uh, vehicle work done. So he's kind of stuck with the mechanic. So, you know, don't worry, they'll definitely be on the uh, last two shows with us. Uh, just because of the planning and the recording and such. You know, don't worry, they'll they'll be here again. So then that way, there is a little bit more entertainment than just me. But we'd like to welcome you. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, and just kind of wanted to share something with you guys, as this will be the uh, last show that will be streaming on pad podcast form. Of course, that would be uh, Buzzsprout, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, stuff like that. Um, as, of course, after this month, it will be going directly just YouTube only. Uh, unfortunately, due to the amount of listeners and amount of downloads, paying monthly the whole paying monthly thing is just not adding up uh to be financially uh, smart basically so that's kind of why that's that's happening um but the more subscribers we get to youtube then eventually hopefully we can get back into the podcast game back to a lot more than just that the other thing too is be on the lookout for our october show uh that would be a little different as well different than last year's as kind of want to bring in a little bit of entertainment value to it and want to bring in a little bit more of a Halloween vibe as well. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, obviously that's next month because this month we'll be discussing 2002. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump back in time to discuss the top five TV shows. Back in time. All right, so the top five TV shows, some honorable mentions. Uh, number one is Survivor. There's Scrubs, which was a big show for me. Uh, I didn't actually start watching until later half of the season or series. Uh, I love Dr. Cox. I could relate to JD very well. Um, it was definitely one of those TV shows that would hype me up or make me feel better if I was having a bad day. Just the comedy of it was just outstanding. Um, and just to the point where again, I could relate to JD. So regardless of what he was feeling in his life, in some cases I could feel in mine, kind of see that character overcome his difficulties and difficult life decisions that come into play. And it kind of just helped me feel a little bit better. Um, so which kind of, you know, is great storytelling in a way too. Um, and, you know, I would absolutely love to hear your guys' opinions, like what shows that you enjoyed during that time period, what shows kind of do you go to as a go to, to kind of make you feel better in a positive manner, kind of overcome those uh, feelings that you guys have, whether if it's depression, anger, um, anything of that nature. I'd love to know what TV shows, because I'd love to hear about how characters can resonate with individuals. But of course, there's Fear Factor, Star Trek, Enterprise, uh, Dawson's Creek, uh, Naruto, and Smallville. The number one show, though, was actually found on HBO with a 9.3 out of 10 IMD, IMDb score. Uh, it, it aired from 2002 to 2008, and that was The Wire. Um, the creator was David Simon. The plot was basically about the Baltimore drug scene as seen through the eyes of drug dealers and law enforcement. It did star Dominic West. Uh, he actually played in some movies um, such as Chicago. He was Fred Casely and 2018 Tomb Raider. Uh, Lance Redrick, some of his movies that he's actually appeared on was John Wick as Sharon or Sharon or uh, 2022 Netflix series, and this is where I know him from, is Albert Wesker. That's kind of what kind of hit me as far as, oh, I recognize that guy, uh, which, by the way, rest in peace to Netflix's series of Resident Evil, because if you haven't heard, they will not be renewing the second season because it flopped. Um, it also starred Sonja, Sonja Son. Uh, she did movies like the 2000s Shaft as Alice, and then, of course, Idris Elba was in about 37 episodes. So that's really cool. Uh, while filming, Andre Ro Royo, 
was once given heroin from a Baltimore resident. He now calls this interaction his quote unquote street Oscar. It, uh, Stephen King actually called the character Snoop perhaps the most terrifying female villain to ever appear in a television series. Now, coming from Stephen King, of course, that's a little high praise there. Number two, it looks like to be The Sopranos. This also starred on HBO and did have a 9.2 out of 10 IMDb score. It, the series ran from 1999 to 2007. It was created by David Chase. Um, he actually produced The Many Saints in Newark. That was my introduction to The Sopranos. I know, probably going to get a lot of flack for that and say, like, how can you watch a movie but not the TV show? But in my defense, Many Saints in Newark was actually a prequel to the TV series. So that was my first um, involvement with that. Well, not really involvement, but kind of exposure to the Sopranos world. And I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Um, the plot was is basically about a New Jersey mob boss, Tony Soprano, deals with personal and professional issues in his home and business life that affect his mental state, leading him to seek professional psychiatric counseling. counseling. Um, so again, the Many Saints of New Work actually is a prequel to Tony Soprano. You see him as a kid and you kind of see what led him into the mob world. Um, starred James Gandolfini, which is made the show, basically. Um, when you think of Sopranos, you obviously think of him. He is the guy. Uh, Lorraine Bracco, she did movies such as Goodfellas and Karen Hill. Eddie Falco, he was more of a TV, like American crime scene. Um, I'm sorry, she. It's a she, Eddie Falco, because she was on American Crime Story. She was Hillary Clinton. Um, if you don't know what American Crime Story is, they did a series or a season before the, the whole Clinton scandal when they're in the White House. They actually did it on the um, O.J. Simpson trial. Uh, the crime story about Hillary Clinton it was actually about Bill Clinton, uh, basically his presidency and the scandal with, um, you know, the, the famous phrase of I didn't have sexual relations with that woman, that whole thing. Uh, so that's what that TV show was about. Uh, James Gandolfini claims that he's been contacted by actual wise guys, quote unquote, to compliment him on the authenticity of the series, in addition to giving him advice uh, to settle salary disputes after season four. James Gandolfini gave thirty three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars out of his own pocket to each main cast member of the series. So that was very nice. Um, Number three, shout out to all the fans of Firefly, because that was number three top rated show as well as top grossing show um, network. It showed on Fox. It got a 9.0 out of 10. It did air from 2002 to 2003, though it gained just only a year of being on television. I can I can honestly say that I've met so many Firefly Firefly fans that even till this day, they're coming out of the woodwork still. They love the show. Um, my wife loves the show. She loves the movie as well. Um, so, you know, they're, they're diehard fans out there. It was created by Joss Whedon. Uh, basically, the plot was 500 years into the future. A renegade crew aboard a small spacecraft tries to survive as they travel the unknown parts of the galaxy and evade wearing factions as well as authority agents out to get them. It starred Nathan Fillion. Of course, he was on Castle, um, movie Serenity, and Slither. Gina Torres, she did movies such as Serenity, Matrix Revolutions, Reloaded, as well as uh, as cast, the character cast. Alan Tudyk, he did movies like Rogue One. He was the voice of K2SO. Uh, I, Robot, as Sonny, and Knight's Tale as what? What? Uh, between shots, though, instead of going to their separate, separate trailers, the cast would actually wait on the ship's lounge. Joss Whedon wanted the show to run for seven seasons. However, the Fox execs canceled it due to them believing it was too dark. Well, it was a, it was a mistake on their part, right? Uh, number four, it network uh, was NBC. Got 8.8 .8 out of 10. The series ran from 1999 to 2006. That was actually The West Wing. It was created by Aaron, Aaron Sorkin. The plot is inside the lives of staffers in the West Wing of the White House. It starred Martin Sheen, which you'll know him as Charlie Sheen, as well as Emilio, Emilio Estevez's Estevez, Estevez? Yeah, Emilio Estevez's father, uh, Rob Lowe and Allison Janney. 
Martin Sheen was originally actually only scheduled to appear in four episodes per season. However, it was only after the plot was filmed that it was de uh, decided to make him a regular cast member. The set was supposedly so realistic that Warner Brothers studio tour groups are not permitted inside the sound stages where the show was filmed due to the White House security concerns. So that's kind of interesting. Go as authentic as that. And, you know, even on the tours, people aren't allowed. Number five, and this has no relations to the uh, Marvel at all, but the network was FX. Uh, the TV show is called The Shield. Scored 8.7 out of 10. It ran from 2002 to 2008. The creators was Sean Ryan. The plot was drama series. Uh, sorry, the, it was about a drama series following the lives of cases of dirty cop Vic Mackey and the LAPD un unit under his command. It starred Michael. Now, I'm going to make fun, fun of me for this, but it's Michael Chick. Chickless. Uh, he was TV show on American Horror Story, uh, which he was in Freak Show. Um, movies, he was The Thing slash Ben Grimm and Fantastic Four. Uh, then you have Jay, Jay Carnes. He was TV star on uh, Star Trek Voyager as Lieutenant Duncan and Michael Jace. Uh, in 2017, Michael Jace was sentenced to 40 years in prison for the murder of his wife. Uh, so that's kind of dark and twisted turn there. Uh, the first basic cable series to win a Golden Globe for best television drama. So that's kind of interesting as well. And, you know, major hits um, along the 2002 TV show. Absolutely. Uh, not a, I've never seen Naruto. I will be honest, never seen it. Um, I was born DBZ. And if you don't know what that is, it's Dragon Ball Z. Um, fan than anything else. Smallville. I mean, I'm a bunch of a couple of episodes i'm just not a superman fan i'm a batman fan um star trek i mean my mom watched it when we're uh, of course younger and everything i wasn't i'm more of a star wars fan than i am a star trek fan though i do have respect to jj abrams movies uh that actually came out so there's that um fear factor i know um rogan actually uh did not seth rogan obviously uh but Joe Rogan was the host for Fear Factor as well. And then, of course, you know, Scrubs. You already know my, my take on Scrubs. But that's it, guys. Uh, that is the top five TV shows of 2002. Um, and, you know, if you enjoyed that list, let us know. We'd love to hear what kind of TV shows you watched during that time frame. Because other than Scrubs, I mean, that was during close to my high school year. So I was watching a lot of South Park, too, which 35th anniversary or no, 25th anniversary, sorry, is actually found on YouTube, um, HBO Max, if you have it, I would recommend watching that as well. But that that's it. Um, again, stay tuned for next week when we go over the top five cartoons. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. And you know, look forward to seeing you guys next week.